Hey everybody, today we're going to learn how to revise using something I like to call smiley face tricks. I like to call it that because that's how I learned it. Smiley face tricks are basically quick revision strategies for you to use to make your writing more vivid. You want to try to get your audience to be with you in your writing and care about what you're saying. In this example, the sentence is, she was angry at her sister. That just tells us that. But then, if we want to show that, we say, she was so angry at her sister for not helping her with her math homework that she grabbed her sister's geometry homework, crumpled it into a ball, and slammed it in the trash. So we just made that whole scene longer, but I added more words, but also we gave a lot more detail so then my, our reader might care about our story more. These tricks are supposed to help you become a better writer because they're fun. They will help you have fun when you're writing and you get to be more creative and really feel like you are a real author. So there's a couple of directions I want you to pay attention to. First of all, in your daybook, draw eight large boxes. You're going to add notes for the smiley face tricks. Um, you know how I like you to use color. So use some color to try to break up the strategies and make them mean something to you. You can also doodle to make a way for you to remember the strategies better. And I want you to try each one in your writing. And during the slides, there will be ways for you to do that. The next thing I want you to do is, as you are working, you're going to add your writing to Padlet. So if you have your iPhone or whatever phone you, you have, you can snap a picture of the QR code or use the web address at the bottom. The first smiley face trick is the Magic 3. So Magic 3 is three examples in a row when you you have three things that modify. So we're going to look at the three verbs and what the author is doing to add some support. In this example from the paperback princess story, the sentence is, Elizabeth was a beautiful princess who lived in a castle and had expensive clothes. She was going to marry a prince named Ronald. Unfortunately, a dragon smashed her castle, burned all her clothes with his fiery breath, and carried off Prince Ronald. So you see that we have three separate verbs of what happened to you, the princess. Now it's time for you to try it. So I want you to stop the video and write your sentence. So think of a problem that you had. So the starter that we have after you is, I was so angry that, and you're going to stop the video and you're going to try to write a sentence with three good verbs to show what, how, what made you angry. The second smiley face trick is figurative language. So this is just adding similes, metaphors, personification, onomatopoeia, all those good things that you use when you are trying to write poetry before, but now you're going to use it when you write fiction or even nonfiction. In this example from the book Twilight Comes Twice, the sentence is, when the sky is full and singing with stars, you know that twilight has given way. So now I want you to stop the recording and rewrite the sentence, the wind was strong, and use a couple of different types of figurative language. So you're going to write a couple different sentences. And I will challenge you to use the magic three and figurative language, but that's only if you really want to try. Please remember to add your sentences on the Padlet and the address is on slide three. The next smiley face trick is humor. Um, with humor, I want you to know that you not everything needs humor, but a lot of times when we're writing something for class, it's kind of fun to put some humor in there. We want to wake up your readers' emotions, try to get them into the story more. Um, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to click on the picture 
so you can listen to the story. It's about a little boy trying to go to the bathroom. And it's just a cute story. And yes, I know it's a lot younger than you are normally reading, but it's still a funny story. Okay, stop the video, listen to the book. The next smiley face trick is a hyphenated modifier. Hyphenated means we're going to use this little dash at, at the top, okay? Um, so we're going to connect, connect adjectives together and try to be creative. But the adjectives are going to de define or describe a noun. So in this sentence from the book, All of the Above, the sentence reads, I give him Marcel's, Marcel's special turn on the charm and give him the big pearly whites smile. So you see those dashes between the words. That's what you're going to try to do. So now I want you to try elaborating one or both of these sentences. There once was an old woman or he flashed her a wicked grin. So try to use humor and or a hyphenated modifier. And the trick is going to be, can you use both of those in, the, in one of the sentences? And remember to write your sentence on the Padlet. The next smiley face trick is repetition for effect. So this is to repeat something for a specific reason, to try to get your reader's attention. The sentence is, today I wore a red hat. Not just any red hat, the red hat from my grandma. Not just any grandma, my grandma. Now I know that's a really simple sentence and the only two things that were repeated was red hat. But it still gives some importance and some stress saying that um, this is important to that character. So now for you to try it, tell why Stanley was so unhappy and try to use repetition for effect. And on this slide, this is one example. Stanley was very unhappy. Not just unhappy, but really, really unhappy. So unhappy that he was horribly unhappy. The next trick is expanded moment. And this is basically when you take a really small moment and you slow the motion down. You try to give the reader more details and try to convey feelings. So you're going to write descriptive words for how a pillow feels and then try to find um, words that mean that are a feeling of mud, okay? And then how think about how these words convey the feeling of things. Another thing you can try is words that evoke smells. So how do you what does popcorn smell like when you first um, pop it or what does burnt popcorn smell like? What do brownies smell like when you're uh, putting them in the oven and waiting on them to, to cook? Um, what are some other words that describe pleasant smells? And then list some words that describe unpleasant smells like the burnt popcorn I said for a second ago or um, the example here is rotten eggs. What are, they, what are some words that describe those things? And now to try the expanded moment um, think about a dog at a park. You can think of the sight, the touch, the smell, um, taste, but that might not be something you want to taste at a dog park or a dog at a park. And then we want to think about sounds. What are some sounds at a dog park? And this is an example of an expanded moment. I watched Georgia run through the Thompson Park. I'm out of breath when I finally catch up with her. I run my hand along her back, soft as a feather pillow. I pat her heaving sides and scratch her ears, but she hardly acknowledges my presence. I command her to sit, and she does so, but her mind is elsewhere. Her ears twitch as she tunes into the sounds I cannot hear. Georgia strains to catch the slightest whisper in the air. Her pink tongue pulses from her lips. Her dark, almond-shaped eyes are fixed on something small and brown. And then, suddenly, she is off, lickety-split, on another wild goose chase. And this is from the story at the park with Georgia. And if you notice, there were a few um, other smiley face tricks that this author used. We used the hyphenated modifier right here with the lickety split. And we had lots of figurative language, like almond shaped eyes and a wild goose chase. So you see how we took the dog. We were just at the park. 
and then we made this long paragraph to get a, to get the reader to care about our dog and the time that we spent there. So now your job is to um, pretend you are in a boring language arts class that is not Miss McCabe's room. You're trying to you're daydreaming about where you would another place you would like to be. So first list your senses. What do you see? What do you touch? What do you smell? What are there tastes that you have? What sounds do you hear? Then use your imagination and then write. And then remember to write your um, couple sentences on the Padlet. The next uh, smiley face trick is specific details for effect. So just like we were um, explaining a moment, now we want to have specific details. Every word increases a writer's power. So you have power when you show what's happening in the story instead of just telling. So in the sentence, the dog was big and mean. Yeah, that's probably true, but it doesn't tell me anything about that dog. Okay. But this sentence, a hundred pounds of snarling yellow fur launched itself in the porch, straining at a rope thin as spaghetti. That gives you a totally different feeling for that dog, right? The next one is full circle ending. And here, writers include an image or phrase at the beginning of a piece of their writing, and then they mention it again when it gets close to the end. So when you were little, if you ever read, if you give a mouse a cookie, um, if you give a moose a muffin, um, math curse, I don't know if y'all read that or not when you were little, but love you forever, though, there's pieces of those stories that repeat at the end. And in this slide, I'm going to let you pause it and read the if you give a mouse a cookie story to yourself. And I want you to pay attention to what is repeating. How does the author take you from the beginning with if you give a mouse a cookie and how does the author take you to the end? So pause the recording, please, and read the story. So now here's what I want you to do. Um, you have your quick write from today. I want you to reread it and then add three or more smiley face tricks for revision. And when you finish, snap a picture of your revision and email it to me. And then my email address is on that slide. There are other ways to elaborate um, that they just didn't make any of my smiley face tricks, but we do want to pay attention to our verbs. We want our verbs to be to show action and not just have the verbs be is and are and were. So let's try to pay attention to our verbs. Um, we can add some adjectives, but I really like action verbs and specific nouns better. I don't like you to use adverbs, but you can certainly try those sometimes. Um, allusions, analogies, anecdotes are just short stories. Definitions, if that's a piece of writing that you're doing. Description. Dialogue. Dialogue are, is really good in our writing because we want to have different voices. Also, we want to make sure that we have some reasons sometimes depending on what we're writing and sensory images. Okay, so keep these smiley face tricks um, in mind as you write. Try to find some when you're reading your independent books or when we're working and stuff with class and Try to make note of when you are using them in your own writing. Thank you.